Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is going to be a bit of an interesting one today. I'm joined here by two of my friends, Remy and Thomas, and today we're going to have a really interesting video. So our whole concept for today is that we've got a noob versus pro challenge. So we've got Tavi, who's our rocket expert, who kind of knows what he's doing. Kind of. But he's limited on a budget, so it's with a twist. So he has a very limiting, or will it be, budget of $10. So we'll see what he can do for $10. And uh, Thomas and I have no idea what we're doing. We've never built a rocket before. I haven't even really launched one before, um, but we have an unlimited budget. So it'll be a good test to see if when making rockets, you're really limited by the amount of money you have, or if you can do anything for $10. What do we think is going to happen? Uh, a Still. crash and burn, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that might happen. Uh, now we'll move on to planning, where we'll each talk about what we want to buy and like how we're going to make our rockets. And we'll go buy some stuff later. We'll see how it goes. And how do we make this? So you need to make the rocket. So here you've oh. got a model of a previous season of line one. Okay. It's, it's retired, it dies. So we need a tube for like the body. The body. A cardboard tube. Cup maybe. Sure, Cup yeah. thing for nose cone. Um, we so need some like some straw. Yeah, we need straws for like to guide it on the, yeah, the, so the, the thingy. Yeah, the rail. So for the fins. The fins, yeah. Balsa wood's good because it's really light. So cardboard or balsa. Um, um, we need some epoxy probably. Yeah, I don't know what for. Hopefully. It's just good. Um, I was going to draw a diagram, but we've kind of got that to go so off we've got of. Oh, the parachute. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so. Okay. So elastic. we've got elastic. This is a longer list than I thought it would be. We don't have anything to attach the parachute. To elastic. We need something to attach the parachute on with. So something just for plastic, parachute. Pl just a plastic, plastic thing. We're gonna have to, I don't know where we're gonna find that. Is that it? That should be everything we need, right? Yeah, I think so. We, we're getting rocket engines. They're not included in our budgets, by the way. Okay, so, so Tavi doesn't yeah. have to pay for his rocket engines. Which ones are we using? Uh, B64. B6, yeah. Okay, I only have a $10 budget. So this is gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I have an idea. The whole plan is gonna center around a big body tube, right? I'm gonna buy an extra long body tube and then what I'm going to do with that, I'm going to cut it. So a section of the body tube will end up being the rocket itself. And then the rest, I have all this lovely spare body tube that I can use to build other parts of the rocket. For instance, I can use it to roll up and make a smaller body tube for the engine mount. I can also use it to roll up more body tube and make centering rings like this. And then there's my body tube and motor retainer. Now, to make the fins, I can also use the body tube using a technique known as tube fins. So essentially from a side view, it would look something like this. You have two extra tubes or two, three, four extra tubes on the side that provide stability. Since I have such a long body tube, this is easily doable. For the nose cone, I'm probably gonna use something like a plastic champagne glass. I've used those before. Um, and to make the shoulder for that, I'm probably just gonna use also a section of the body tube because it's extra long. Um, to make the parachute, I'm going to use a plastic bag, and that should be about it. Alright, we're here at Kmart. I'm looking for some supplies. Uh, not having much luck right now. Hopefully I can find something. Alright, I could only find one of these things. Uh, I hope I can use it as a dose code, but I think we have to go to the dollar store now. Oh, what do we need? We need some like, we've got hot glue. Epoxy. We need epoxy. Epoxy. Big one. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Three bucks for epoxy time he's gonna do this. I don't know what he's up to. He's going for some like long tubes. He claims to know what he's talking about. Thomas and I are just gonna go to Officeworks. Got some elastic, that's good. Okay, let's get the purple one. Why do is, is, it's more recoverable. Yes. Purple. We won't be littering. We are saving the environment. I think this is what I need. Oh. We still need to get string. We're looking for plastic still. Yeah. We found an issue. I'm a dollar fifty over. But there's a compromise. Since you guys are unoriginal, you want to use some of my stuff. So I think we should take a dollar fifty off some of these materials if you're gonna use them. Yeah, just, so, just have it just put it as so if it's half, compromise. Half. Okay. That's a dollar fifty. I spend ten dollars then. Yeah. We found this lovely plastic sheeting known as bubble wrap. That's we can't we can find use. anything else, but we don't think we'll be able to find anything else at like Bunnings or Office Works. No. So we have found a better solution than bubble wrap. These balloons, which if we don't inflate them, could work as perfect parachutes. 
Would it be possible for me to get it in a plastic bag? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, we're looking for our cardboard tube at Office Works. Thomas thinks he spotted. Yes. Oh, hey, that's small though. Yeah, that's good. That's we're size. using B engines. So we can do design. Oh, uh, yeah, we can just like do a pattern. Yeah, do a pattern. So it's good. We're probably just gonna go purple, right? We're in Bonnings now, we're gonna go find some balsa wood. Make our pins. Yeah. We're gonna make pins. Tavi knows exactly where to go, so yeah. we should be fine. What kind of uh, wood? Like a half mil, half we checked out at Bonnings and then we were done shopping, so we went back to Tavi's place and started building. Right, we've got everything we need. What do we do? So first, what do we do? Things first. These are gonna go on top of there. Oh. So if we that, that looks cut that, that looks really. It looks like really it's not wonky. gonna work. Why would it not work? Because there's like. Sure. It's a tiny bit more drag. Tubby's using the same ones, we'll be fine. True. Yeah. First things first, we make the engine mount. Okay, how do we do that? Thomas then had to explain to me how an engine mount works and how to make one, as I had no idea how to do either of those. I then started work on the circles that hold it inside of the rocket, and Thomas made the engine mount tube itself, and then he started work on the fins. Alright, so it's the next morning, um, we're gonna finish our rocket and then we'll finally let Tarby build his. So we'll just see what we've gone over for now. So currently we've made the engine mount, so we'll hold the engine normally in well, place, hopefully. But um, we kind of need to like, work on an engine block really. Um, we've got our fins here, um, fossil wood. That took us two hours at least. Now all we've got to do is engine block. Engine block, like glue on the fins, put on the cone, and then we can start making the parachute. So we finished putting in the engine stopper so that it doesn't fly out and it's flying, hopefully, only. And so we just started working on our parachute. Yeah. So we've already measured out and like punctured. Like eight holes, yeah, eight I holes. think. Yeah. Um, so now we're just trying to find a good length of string or elastic to use, and then we'll put it through all of the holes and tie it together for one thing. So we have just finished making our incredible parachute with our lovely helium balloon. We're pretty much done now. So we've we'll attached everything. All together. we've got to do is yeah, put everything together. We're not gonna like have to glue these strings into our rocket body because of the way that we're putting on our nose cone. That's kind of like big gaps here, like right there. So our plan is we'll probably just do a hole and make it go through. Probably not all the way to the top because that's where it's probably sitting on, but that'll work pretty well. Um, and then we'll let Tavi go. And while yeah. Tavi's on, we'll give it a paint job because we've got some type of paint. Like I said, my whole plan revolves around this body tube. I'm basically gonna use this for most of the rocket. So that means the body tube, the engine mount, and the fins. So I'm also gonna be using the same nose cone, one of these things. Uh, that's because the other team is unoriginal and decided that they wanted to use the same nose cone as well. So. so, so far I've made this pretty janky looking motor mount, which I made from some cardboard rings that I cut out from this extra body tube. Uh, I also made this nose cone, which I also cut from this champagne glass, and I used an extra tube in there as a shoulder. And so it slides on quite nicely on top of this tube, and it will just stay there. And this next step is to glue this motor mount in and make the parachute, and we should be nearly done. All right, so I've done the things I said I was going to do. I've glued the motor mount in, I've attached all three of the tube fins, and the nose cone is on. Uh, this is how much body tube I had left from that giant roll of uh, cellophane. Uh, and the next step is to make the parachute. Now, I was going to use the plastic bag that I bought with the products. I explicitly asked for a plastic bag, but I realized I can just use the cellophane from that came with this tube. So, okay, so change of plans. I tried using the cellophane material as the parachute, but it turns out it rips really, really, really easily. So if that were to deploy at Apogee, it would just rip and then the rocket would crash. And that's not what we want. So instead, I think I might use this plastic bag again uh, and hopefully this won't rip. Hopefully it's an easy enough material to make a parachute out of. All right, so this is what I've done so far. I finished making the parachute and I attached the shock cord to it. So the plastic bag looks like it would work. 
Uh, I use duct tape for all the string attachments and stuff like that. Uh, the next step is to attach it into the rocket. I'm going to do it by using this piece of cardboard and a lot more hot glue. Alright, so after attaching the parachute and finishing everything off, the rocket's actually done. So, as you can see, I've got some launch lugs on, I've got the fins on. As the rocket launches, uh, hopefully these fins could keep it stable and hopefully the center of mass is in a good location. I added a little bit more uh, glue to the top of the nose cone to try and get the center of mass as far forward as possible since that's the most stable position. Uh, the nose cone is not actually attached to the rocket, so as it, the ejection charge goes off, the nose cone will just fall away and it's landing in grass so it shouldn't break or anything like that. And then here's the parachute. It's attached to a shock cord and it's all folded up here. And yeah, hopefully it works. Before going out to launch rockets, we did a quick igniter test to make sure my new 12 volt launch controller works. Finally, we did a quick weigh-in of our rockets. Mine did pretty well, weighing in at 54 grams. But the same couldn't be said for Remy and Thomas's rocket which weighed in at an astonishing 119 grams. So here we have our rocket perfectly balanced, which I want to clear it is in, it's not particularly good. So a few concerns we have about it. First of all, we damaged the fin a little bit on the way here, but that shouldn't It'll do much. Um, the weight is a big concern. As you will have seen, it's like over twice as heavy as Tavi's rocket, so that's a big concern. But in terms of strength, it should be a lot stronger than Tavi's. Also, another um, concern is the parachute not quite working. Doing some original slide testing, it wasn't the best parachute. But we'll see how that works. I'll try to catch it. That still counts as full recoverability. It does. If you get it back down in one piece, that that's recoverability. Yeah. So if it's reusable. Yeah. Um, we think it, it should do pretty well. Um, should the engine work? Uh, actually, no. I will say, one thing I'm scared of is this like engine block and stuff not working. Yeah. But Tavi used only hot glue for his and he seems like happy with it. So he, he'll he know what he's doing, so it should be fine. All right, so here's my rocket. Uh, I currently haven't named it, but it's pretty scuffed in some ways. So uh, my main concern is this misaligned motor mount. It's like very slightly misaligned, but especially with these standoffs and these launch lugs, I'm worried that it's gonna go, you know, pitch over and start corkscrewing, and that could be pretty ugly. Uh, other than that, the parachute should hopefully work unless it melts, um, and I hope these fins will be enough to stabilize it. So I guess we'll go set it up and launch them. Take a look at it. Any damage? Any clear damage? No damage.
Five, four, three, two, one. Mission. So, as you can see, my rocket went quite a bit higher than Remy and Thomas's rocket. However, they were actually successful in recovering their rocket. My rocket ended up lawn darting into the ground because the parachute failed to come out of the body tube. This was most likely because of an over generous amount of recovery wadding I added to the already slim body tube. It's an easy fix for the future, but still means I failed in a critical area. This just goes to show that anyone, even with relatively little experience, can make a functioning model rocket at a small scale. Remy and Thomas also ended up not spending a lot of money on their rocket, and there were certainly some things that didn't need buying for the rocket to still function. I hope you enjoyed this slightly different video, until next time, see ya!